All right, so the vlog was a smashing success. We had, I think, close to 10 viewers uh, for that first attempt. Now, four or five of those were mine, but I'm gonna still mark that up as uh, breaking past single digits. Um, you know, another way of looking at it is all the people that didn't watch the vlog, and maybe that ought to be my goal, to see how obscure we can keep things, right? Um, as opposed to searching for success, as a lot of YouTubers do, uh, we can search for anonymity. Think about all the people we wouldn't want watching anything that I create. If you think you might be one of those people, uh, just turn, turn, turn it off. So Pamela State Park is kind of near Winterset. It's a little bit southwest of Winterset. And uh, it's a place I've been a few times to run, but uh, today we're gonna go out and bike around the area. One thing I'm hoping that we can do is there's kind of a crossing of the river where uh, it's built up and the river super shallow. I'm hoping I can ride across that without any trouble, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. And today I'm carrying all of this camera equipment. The bike itself is significantly heavier than it, than it would be normally. And so I worry a little bit on some kind of slick surfaces, keeping things upright and uh, the consequences if in fact I do, uh, I, I do crash. So stay tuned for that. Well, I thought about the army. Dad said, son, you're fucking high. And I thought, yeah, there's a first for everything. So I took my old man's advice. We sat semester. It was only 15 grand. Spin it, man. I thought about the army. I dropped out and joined a band instead. The area that we're headed out to today is in Madison County, and for those of you who remember the title of the movie, The Bridges of Madison County, we've got a bunch of these really cool covered bridges. Uh, I don't know what the purpose of them is. I should probably do a little bit of research uh, just to satisfy my own curiosity. We're gonna try to visit one of them. I'm hoping that there aren't gonna be any other people there. Other times that I've visited these covered bridges, there's been a lot of people there, uh, just because they're really popular kind of uh, I'm gonna say couples getaway destinations. I think there's some romanticism there because of the movie. Um, but the one that we're gonna to go to is actually southwest of town. So people coming from Des Moines are gonna have a lot of other bridges to choose from uh, that are gonna be closer than the one that we're gonna be able to go to. So I'm hoping that no one's gonna be there. Just, I have just started my ride now. Coming up kind of a cool bridge back here. Oh, so I guess I'm already at the water feature. Yeah, just check out the really cool water crossing that exists here. Up ahead, so foggy. On the right hand side, you've got all these really fun stones to run across. It's actually a little bit slippery, so you gotta be a little careful coming in and out of it, but really fun to do, especially on a hot day. things I like about this place is just how quiet and secluded it is. It's a nice wooded area, but otherwise 
not too much to see. I don't think it's very large in terms of acreage, but uh, pretty nonetheless. As we exit, I think we're gonna go more into farmland, and we'll take a look at that here coming up. We just left the park and uh, headed out on the gravel roads. So one really nice thing about central Iowa is that there's a really extensive um, rail to trail conversion bike path. And I used to ride that a lot when I was younger. And I would always, as you were crossing the roads, these kind of country roads that were out there, just in the middle of nowhere, I always look down those roads and wonder, wonder what is down that road, right? Just kind of that sense of uh, wanting to see what's beyond your, your immediate line of sight. And it's funny because I don't know why it took me so long to realize you could go out and get a bike at any point in time and uh, and find out. It's totally it's totally possible. And uh, I wish I'd done it when I was younger and I had a lot more endurance. Nowadays, it's a lot harder to make those kind of big efforts without feeling tired, like I need to take a nap the rest of the day. And yeah, Sarah, she can tell you that even my small outings oftentimes result in a nap on the couch, much to the delight of, uh, of no one. Climbing's really my favorite part of biking, most likely, and I know that probably sounds strange to people that don't do a lot of climbing, but for me, there's something really rewarding about it. Most of what I'm doing today is really just training for three or four weeks from now. I'm actually headed down to Springfield, Missouri, where Sarah's company is headquartered. And I'm actually really looking forward to it because for the first time, I'm gonna to get to meet all the people that I hear about every day. It's kind of, a, it's kind of like going and meeting characters from a TV show or, or from a book. All right, so the, the drone's gonna have to make a turn here and it's gonna have to decide how it wants to live its life. So it should be able to see that I am completely this way, but it just can't. Oh baby, why you suck so bad? So like I was saying, the main reason that uh, I'm looking forward to this trip is in order to meet a lot of these people and uh, just spend some time with them. The other thing that I'm looking forward to is, you know, anytime I've got a, a, a trip really anywhere, I try to find a way to make it, uh, make it an adventure too. It's, it's really just a question of, of what I select. And so the drone's gonna, gonna struggle again here. It just doesn't know how to get out of these situations. The drone just crashed and uh, yeah, that's real unfortunate, but luckily, uh, while this is my first crash with the uh, Mavic 3 Pro, uh, I have crashed my, uh, my, my Mini 3 Pro a number of times at this point, uh, one irretrievably into a pond. In any event, things seem to be okay. Wow, this is the creepiest fucking place ever. Because these are very, very humongous I don't know if they're like turkey vultures or, or what. You can, you can tell that my education was really geared toward animal identification. Yeah, I don't know what kind of big ass birds these are, but whoa, when you yell, they fly, they go away. Get the hell out of here, big bird. It's kind of amazing actually that, uh, speaking of big bird, that they were able to turn big bird into this kind of like friendly, lovable character because, you know, when I think about my experiences in life, um, pretty much none of them that involve large birds are positive at all. 
are actually quite terrible. Apparently I'm on the wrong route right now and uh, I'm entering a B road. Now B roads are really uh, something that I'm more familiar with from a motorcycling standpoint. A lot of times people will uh, seek them out. I did so as well. Uh, suffered definitely my most significant crash on a motorcycle ever. Um, really, you know, flipped over the handlebars, that whole, that whole thing. Um, luckily came away uninjured. I have very, very strong bones. That's not a boast, although it is. Uh, it's just, it's just a fact of the matter. I always find these kind of churches that are totally in the middle of nowhere to be really odd and kind of interesting. Here's a little look at this church. And it's just a really small little church. Now it is Sunday and, uh, wow, looks like it was from 1840. Kind of looks, uh, kind of looks like a little school. It says it's got worship on, uh, on Sundays at 930. Right now, we're at uh, 8.50. I don't see anybody around, so there's a part of me that thinks this is no longer operational. On the other hand, it's, uh, it's really, really well-maintained, actually. This little church is so strange. Um, 1889, so, you know, it's interesting to think. I wonder how many farmers and their families, which, which must be all that was out here at the time, um, you know, how many of them came here? Because certainly if you were in one of the town centers, which would be, I think, you know, Winterset would have been the closest large one, uh, you know, you would have gone to church there. So these are people that are, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 miles outside of the nearest town of any size. Now, by the looks of it, you could probably fit 15, 20 families in there. So be curious to know how far someone had to come to get here and how did they get here? Was it, uh, was it uh, horses or... You know how many of them walked be uh be interesting to know i wonder what uh wonder what they do when there's bad weather bridge closed ahead and uh let's see this area is protected by electronic surveillance so we are being surveilled oh holy shit yeah 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 okay check it out it's actually really really pretty all right, so it seems like we're probably on the uh, the lesser traveled side of the uh, the bridge road. There's actually a little path here that I think we can take. Here's the bridge right here, and it is really rather cool. So Roseman Bridge, looks like it was built in 1883. It's built in just a beautiful area. God, I just love it out here. Really wish I could live right there. Obviously, I probably need to make a nicer house, but that said, Love to live out in an area like this. I mean, you can just hear how alive it is. And they had that nice little church over there. Not that we'd spend a lot of time in it, but who knows, maybe buy it and turn it into something cool like a recording studio. Uh, actually, I would love to buy that church and make that my home office. That'd be really, really cool. Let's go ahead and take a look on this, uh, on this bridge. So you've got your... Uh, to be expected, stupid graffiti from from kids. Looks like Kilroy was here. That's fucking exciting. Oh wow, the whole thing is just, oh, it's so cool in here. It's been a long time since a car drove on this. The flooring is really neat, actually. Here, I'll give you a quick close up on the, uh, on the flooring. I can't say that I'm thrilled to be wearing what's my certainly my most ridiculous cycling outfit but uh to this kind of really beautiful site but is what it is but she don't use nothing that she buy at the store All right, so I'm at the Roseman Covered Bridge right now, and uh, it's actually been a really, really cool place to uh, to check out. There's the there's the nice little church down the road, and then 
this is the covered bridge. I did look up the situation with that church to find out, you know, is it an actual church? Um, I didn't find the answer to that specific question, but what I did find is that apparently it's a venue that people use to get married at. All right, so I think that wraps it up here for the covered bridge. Again, really cool location and definitely one that I would like to check out uh, perhaps in the future, although it'd be really cool to actually try to do some kind of trip where I link a number of these bridges together. But for now, it's probably time for me to get back on the bike and uh, finish up this ride. All right, it's slightly off route for me, but there is a really beautiful blue barn up here. And uh, I gotta swing over and check it out. I used to uh, always really be intrigued by the, uh, the broken down, kind of old busted barns that you would see on the side of the road when you were out in, uh, in the country. And I always wanted to find like, uh, like a calendar that showed um, just decrepit barns and uh, never did find that. Apparently the, uh, the audience for such things was, uh, was small uh, or at least they never, sh they never sold them at the local mall which is the only place I ever saw calendars for sale in general. And that barn is really fucking sweet. All right, so here we can kind of see it from, from the uphill side. And you can see just how pretty that damn barn is. I love it. Yeah, super cool. I'd love to live in a place like this. Maybe the one, uh, one change I'd make is I would not want to live on a paved road. Like I've talked about in the past, paved road is no good because a paved road guarantees there's a lot of traffic on it. Uh, otherwise, the state wouldn't bother to, to pave it. You should get online and find uh, traffic maps and it will show you kind of in a color-coded uh, way what the average daily number of vehicles that pass uh, within a certain section of road. And that's really what I have always used to, uh, to plan routes when they were far from home and I, I just was not familiar enough with the, uh, with the area. All right, coming up ahead, you can kind of see it, I think in the distance, although it might be a little hard on the GoPro, is something referred to as uh, the Rippy Dumps. And I found this online a while back looking for the steepest and hilliest spots to ride in Iowa. And this comes up as, uh, as one of the routes. Unfortunately, I put it kind of toward the end and it's 90 fucking degrees, which I don't like. When the gravel is really loose, it's hard as hell to climb because you've got all of your power going on your back wheel and you've got your weight forward naturally from a balance standpoint over the bike. I do not like the way this is already starting out. Yeah, I'm sliding all over the place. All right, now it's only 8% grade, which is honestly a big relief on my legs. We're actually coming up into uh, this fellowship forest. Curious to see what I'm gonna find. One person in a car, probably up to no good. Such a nice shady, kind of secluded place. Be really cool to, uh, to hang out here. Might as well at least take a few minutes and explore. Nice little trail, pretty short. Survey fucking says, homeboy is gone. Kind of expected that. All right, we're back. So it pretty much takes us through the entirety of the ride. Okay, well, ride's over and uh, I'm just driving out of the park. And uh, while well, I didn't drive over that area that I, I kind of biked through where there was the water, the kind of water crossing, um, I was able to see it from the road that I'm on, and God, it is crazy busy. It's been a while since I've been here, and I've never been here on a bike. 
This is really only about a 45 minute drive from where I live, which makes it super convenient. I'm not sure why I haven't come here more. Honestly, if nothing else, doing this vlogging gives me so much just appreciation and respect for the people who are able to do really high quality vlogs. Um, that ride typically would have taken me maybe two hours to do, uh, just based on mileage, but I was out for, wow, like four hours. And even that didn't get all of like, you know, really high quality footage that I would have liked. You know, when I think about doing these, I think I'd like to set myself a goal of, of producing one per month that kind of keeps me active at it. I think any uh, longer gaps than that, and it's very likely to lead to, uh, um, to just stopping permanently it becomes too easy there's there's no momentum in any event there you have it one a month that's the goal one a month